Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Salah. Well, there's a lot there. God be merciful unto us. Now, asking the Lord for mercy, asking him for salvation, trusting him and him alone, that's salvation, putting your faith in, in him. After that, we do. We ask him to bless us. We want to lead a blessed life. I don't know anyone that honestly wants to live a persecuted life. You know, we want uh, things to be uh, a blessing in our life. So, um cause his face to shine upon us. We want others to see the blessing. Now, there's no other people that's been more persecuted, no other people that has been more blessed than uh, the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. That doesn't mean they've all gotten saved. In fact, the, the scripture is very clear. They haven't. Many of them have rejected their Messiah. But uh, Abraham, we can read Romans 4. You want some extra reading today? Go to Romans 4. Abraham uh, was saved without works. David uh, said in the Psalms, and, he, and it's written again in Romans 4, that blessed is a man to whom God uh, imputes righteousness without works. That we're given righteousness without any works, any merit, anything that we do in ourselves. But when we cry out to him for blessing, we, we want him to, uh, or for salvation, we want him to bless our life as well. And, you know, you look at the nation of Israel, one of, and the, the reason they're hated is because they're loved of God. That doesn't mean that, again, they've come to him for salvation. But as we see things begin to uh, just accelerate uh, toward the end times, we can say, well, you know, it makes sense. The world hates God, anything to do with God. He, the world hates God's people. Satan wants to destroy God's people because if he could destroy the nation of Israel, God can't keep his promise uh, to rule and reign uh, that land over there in Jerusalem. Uh, so it causes a lot of confusion with a lot of people. And, uh, it says in the end times, Jerusalem will become a burdensome stone that, uh, you know, Jerusalem is, is, it's a hotbed topic in a lot of, uh, things, but, uh, we as believers in this timeline, we want, uh, to show others that God has blessed us and we want to, uh, reach out to them to salvation, which brings us to verse two that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. That's what we want. We want people to know that there's a Messiah and that he's able to save from this cursed sin problem that we have. That people will ask, well, why do people die? Why does a child die? Because we're under the curse of sin. And uh, we live in a fallen world. And all we can do is we can point them to the one cure. Because here's the thing, it's a tragedy when children die. It's a tragedy when anyone young dies. But it's also a tragedy when somebody's lived to be 90 years old and they haven't trusted Christ. Okay, it doesn't matter how old we are, we have to recognize that we're a sinner. We've lied. We've broken God's laws. If we've ever lied, we've stolen something. We've, we were a thief in his eyes and we deserve judgment. We deserve hell, and kids don't need to be taught uh, to do wrong things. They do wrong things because our heart is wicked, and kids need to be taught what is right to do. But doing what is right doesn't save us. Recognizing we're a sinner and trusting Christ, that saves us. And then if we're saved, we want to say that thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving health among all nations. Why? Because God was merciful unto us. Verse 3, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Salah. You see, God will govern the nations because when God comes back, he was God in the flesh. When he walked the earth, he's still God in the flesh. 
Jesus has always been God. He hasn't always been man. In uh, John 1, 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God chose to become a man because he knew, and that was his plan from the foundation of the world. He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He knew we would mess it up, and he knew we would need a kinsman redeemer, a perfect sacrifice, a person who lived perfectly, who he could then give us his righteousness if we would simply trust in him. But he's going to one day, this psalm, as we look at it, it has the messianic properties in it of he's going to rule and reign. And he's going to rule and reign in Jerusalem. He's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron. He's going to come back with his saints. And the whole earth earth will rejoice in that time because they'll have just gotten through the great tribulation. And uh, it will be a wondrous time on the earth and he'll govern the nations of the earth. Verse five, let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. You know, the Bible also says perfect love casts out fear. That um, when you come to Christ, when you trust him, His is the only perfect love, and it'll cast out fear. You don't need to fear him. Uh, One of my favorite verses in Amazing Grace, love the song Amazing Grace, but "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear." There's There's a point where grace comes in, and it says you're a sinner, you're condemned. But the second part of that stanza, it says, "'Then grace my fears relieved.'" Because perfect love casts out fear. When you trust Christ, you can know, hey, I can know I have salvation and I have nothing to fear in the Lord. What we can fear is we can fear disappointing him. We can fear uh, falling in disfavor because we're not pleasing him as his children. But if you've trusted him, you can't lose your salvation. But when he rules and reigns, everyone who comes into that uh Millennial reign will be a believer. I firmly believe that. The scripture makes that pretty clear. But then they'll have children and it'll be a thousand years and there'll be a great population explosion in this time of prosperity. And not all the children of these believers and their grandchildren, great grandchildren, and whatever it may be, great, 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 however many in a thousand years that they can have, they won't all follow him. You know, and, uh, it, that's a sad thing. We want uh, people to follow him. But anyway, I'm going off a little bit on a tangent there. We'll end there. Uh, praise the Lord. He was merciful unto us. May God bless you with the reading of his word today.